Red's Fly Shop. This is Bob. How may I help you today? Look at that. Woo! Hi, it's Joe from Red's. I am fresh back from Christmas Island, one of my favorite fly fishing adventures on the entire planet. I'm at home editing video and I'm just about done with part one of a two-part series that features lots of fishing action, as you might have guessed, but also some really great intel that we share play by play while my co-host Chad Gillespie and I are fishing the flats. Now, this trip was a little bit different for me. I've been guided historically on Christmas Island many times, but on this trip, we just got dropped off on a flat by ourselves and we had to make all of our own decisions, spot all of our own fish, when to walk, when to cast, uh, what side of the flat to be on, uh, what species of fish is it. A lot of times fish can be hard to identify. So it was a really heightened experience for me. All of our guests were guided on our hosted trip and they had a fabulous time. So if you're thinking about planning a trip to Christmas Island, I want you to do uh, two things. Number one, I would implore you to join one of our hosted groups. We do a super job from pre-trip questions to reservation process, trip planning, and we're with you on the airplane to the lodge and back, acting as an advocate for you and a liaison between our hosted group at Reds and the lodge. So we do things like rotate guides and we make sure things are moving very efficiently in the mornings and the evenings because you essentially have a group leader making sure things are staying on track and on time. Also, single anglers on our trips are welcome. We'll find your roommate, we'll pair you up with other single anglers on the trip, and then we'll rotate guides and boats throughout the week and make you feel like part of the Reds family. So the other thing I want you to do is in the video description, there are links to a whole bunch of different resources. So maybe you've already got a trip planned and you're just getting your stoke on and you're not gonna go with Reds. That's okay. My feelings are only a little bit hurt. Uh, but in the video description, we have links to blog articles, products, and other things that I think will help you plan a super trip, including little pop-ups from products and things uh, that I endorse and I used on the trip in the video. So after this video, there will be a part two, which features lots more fishing action on and how to catch them and what we're catching and what it's really like being there. And then I will actually do a gear dump that I just filmed literally eight or 10 hours after I got home. That gear dump will come last and essentially be a part three in the video series. So without further ado, let's go fishing and you can see what it's like going to Christmas Island. The video is all self-filmed with only a little bit of help and I think it turned out pretty darn good if you ask me. All right, first bonefish for 2024. So exciting. That's awesome. Beautiful. It's the first bonefish on my self-guided, my self-guided trip and it is a dandy. Oh my gosh, that is a Great freaking bonefish. Oh, I'm so happy. Spotted it myself, chose which direction to go, everything all by myself. God, look at that fish. Let's let this guy go. So first bonefish in my 2024 trip uh, was a dandy. Uh, I'm out here self-guided. I didn't get the hookup. Uh, on video because uh, I'm kind of a spaz trying to figure out how to sell film and cast in the wind and find one of, find one of these fish too but that was absolutely excellent uh, when the sun comes out uh, you know at first it was really cloudy but then the sun came out like that when the sun comes out that's time to like scan everything close and then get aggressive and cover some water the clouds have been blowing over every little bit and when it's dark you can't really move because you're just gonna spook fish when that light comes on, get moving and find that fish. That worked out for me on that last fish. It was a really nice one. Very excited about it. Yeah, buddy. 
Oh, that was so rewarding. The sun finally came out for just a moment. And I was able to hook up on this bone. And I just had to, I had to stop on this point. Oh, what a fish. I just had to stop on this point. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Woo. It's day two. It is horrifically dark and cloudy today. Chad, the other host, is behind me. We're self-guided, of course, and then you can see they've formed a gauntlet out there on the ledge, and uh, the guys are blind casting and doing really well. We just can't see a thing. It's just really flat light here today. Uh, so anyway, we'll go check in with those guys. Uh, it's just morning. We're getting started, uh, but in this flat light, and it's diff when you have difficult conditions to see. You need to be prepared uh, for some blind casting. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> that did not take long at all. Oh, that's funny. So we walked this whole flat. We saw like two bonefish. Jay Stamner stepped on and we finally walked over to the ledge and opted for some blind casting. Chad, was that like your first cast on the ledge? Yeah. First drop off there in the edge. Yeah, we could see our buddies are down here kind of in the line and we've been watching them hook fish after fish. Yeah, so makes a big difference. Nice job, Chad. It's gotta feel good. Feels great. Get a little, yeah. get a little meat on the end of the line. Right. Good That's job. Pony. Yeah, nice job, man. That's great. Okay, I'm gonna try to just talk you through just a tip. I don't know if it'll result in the hookup or not, but it's worth mentioning. I got a great big bonefish out there. Actually, there's a pair of them, and they're now coming at me, but I've gotta walk way up and around to get to get the wind in my favor. I better get my, my camera back on. This is like an eight pounder, but in order to make the shot, I've gotta get the wind. Uh, give myself kind of an advantage with the wind. So I'm gonna go up and around and take an indirect approach at him. So wish me luck. They're right there, but I've gotta go up and around so that I can make the shot with the wind. Oh my God, right there. Big fish.
really big fish. Got him. Oh my God. That was so awesome. Yeah. Okay, my backing is binding up a little bit, so I'm gonna loosen my drag. Gotta loosen my drag. Cause that backing is a little choppy. Haven't been that deep into my backing yet this trip. Yeah! Way into the backing. That's a good bonefish. Holy crap. That was so awesome. So I was able to walk up and around and I've had a heck of a time catching fish this morning and uh, finally able to put a good shot on a big tailor. And we did a couple of things really wise this morning. Chad, Chad called it. As soon as that light came on, we walked away from the ledge and got up in the shallow water. And uh, it's so cloudy today. It may not look like it in the background, but it's been so dark. We've had a heck of a time really getting any fish, but he made a good game time decision to do that. And I think that was just so wise of him to do. This is a really big fish. It, I don't know, bonefish, they all seem so big, but he's back, he's way out into my backing again. Hey, and the tip, on that initial run, I could feel my backing glitching a little bit on that first big run. And so I reached down and, and loosened up my drag and I can tighten it just a couple clicks back now. But if you ever feel your backing starting to glitch on a hot run, just loosen that drag up a little bit and uh, it'll be better for you. Give you a little bit of safety margin. fly line now that's a good feeling when you see your feel your back ah, come on buddy I just really don't want to lose this fish and it's pretty much all sand here when you fight them in the coral you really you end up losing a few more of them but here I can play it out a little bit I don't have to muscle this guy I can take a couple minutes and just try to get him to hand okay I've just about got him here Oh, come on, come on. It's hard to get used to that extra rod on the back. Oh, awesome. That is a freaking sweet bonefish. Oh yeah, buddy. Woo. Doesn't get any better than that tailing its way towards me. Had to circle to get the wind right. That was insane. Woo! <laughs> that was so awesome. Oh my gosh, it's been a great morning. So anyway, just to reiterate those tips, uh, if it's dark, you can stick the ledges and blind cast, but when those lights come on, you gotta move. If you want to sight cast, get in the shallow water. And then just because you see a fish doesn't mean you need to cast right at that moment. It's sometimes a good idea to take a roundabout approach and get the wind in your favor because it is going to be blustering here at Christmas. God dang, Chad's on fire. He's on fire. Holy cow. I'm over here fiddling around trying to figure out a time I freaking fly on. Dude, Chad's just going to get beating down on the bonefish. Good lord. Of course, I was your personal cameraman for like five minutes. 
slowed me down a little bit, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Chad's in one. Get on. Oh my goodness, Chad. Way to go, dude. Oh, get out. Woo. That is a spic. That's a spectacular bone fish. Holy moly. Dude, how did you get this one? Oh man, I tell you what, I was walking about 10 inches of water and uh, downgraded to a little beach chain size eight. Yeah, that's the planet softer and and this guy uh, landed about six feet from him. He came right over and ate it. Man. Well, we did everything we could to get the hook up on video, but it didn't work out. Chad and I had three dandy bonefish right here. And uh, we kept losing sight of them. Let me switch this side here. Way he's running. We kept losing sight of them, but uh, it was a situation where they were, it was just right on the fringe of our range. It was like 60 feet. And every time we lost sight of the fish, woo -hoo -hoo, every time we lost sight of the fish, we had to stop and just wait. And it's like, you, oh my gosh, look at him way out there. Yeah, that's a good, another good bone fish. But every time we lost sight of the fish, you had to refrain from casting. You can't just keep throwing in there and throwing in there and throwing in there. You're going to spook the fish. So we had to like make a cast, wait 30 seconds or a minute, even though we knew the fish was right there and then wait until we could see one clearly. And what we did is we kind of surrounded them. Chad took shots way out on the fringe to the left. I took shots way out on the fringe to the right, just waiting for the fish to, to come our way. I mean, we're in ankle deep water. Check this out, show them, Chad. Yeah, I mean, this is ankle deep water. Got my back in my fly line now. But it's so spooky water, you can't just blind shoot in the general direction of that fish. It's much better to just stand dead still, wait, be quiet, and wait till the fish turns broadside. Because that's when you're going to see them. When they're going away from you, they're showing you way less of their body. And when they're coming towards you, they're showing way less of their body. So as soon as they turn broadside, you'll see them again. And then that's when you got to make your shot on one side or the other. So... Uh, that's just another another little tip for bonefish in general, but especially in Christmas Island. Thank you. All right, just trying to be patient. This is like a nine weight bonefish. Yesterday I fished my nine weight. My nine weight was just overkill, and today I've got the eight weight, and it's a little better for this for the skinny water. That is a freaking toad bone, dude. Yeah! Oh my gosh. Do you want me to help you on that? Uh, Tail him? No. I'm, I'm just self-guiding today that the clients are with guides, of course. In landing these big fish like this, there's going to be times you're going to have to get them by yourself. And I've shared this trick with steelhead before too, because sometimes you reel your line in down too short and I can't reach out and grab the leader. So what I'm doing here, and I'm trying to play the fish fairly quick. It's just better for the fish here. So I'm being a little more aggressive than maybe a lot of folks would. But I've loosened up my drag and I've got it over my fingers right here. And if, if crap hits the fan, I can drop my fingers and the fish can just take off. But what I'm gonna do is when I go to reach for the fish, I'm gonna drop my fingers out and let my, my reel freeze pull. Sometimes landing fish by yourself with no net, that's how you gotta do it. So I can reel them in real short. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, that's a big old fish. So as I reach for the leader, oh, I didn't even need to do it. That is my best bone fish ever. Okay, that, that loose drag helped there. I just dropped it and it peeled some line out as I was reaching for the line. It's just kind of a safety mechanism. Holy smokes, dude. Holy cow, man. Dude, in ankle deep water. <laughs> oh, what a bonefish, man. All right, we're gonna do a little, a little recap with a couple of other uh, just tips and just might as well tell you what gear I'm fishing, uh, but so on that situation, Chad and I, the fish was appearing and disappearing, and each time the, there was three of them, they would turn broadside, we would get a good look, and then we would flank them on the left, flank them on the right, and then just be really patient when they disappear. No more casting, because you can't. We've had such a hard time catching fish today. It's not been like 
fish every 20 minutes. I've caught two fish all day today so far, but they've both been good ones. But uh, a couple things, flank those fish, don't cast if you can't see them uh, in, in shallow spooky water like this. And then the other one is, it's really tough to tell when they eat sometimes, but that fish absolutely tailed when he ate. So when the fish was lined up with my direction of retrieve and tailed, that's when I engage and I actually physically set the hook. Uh, so you don't want to set too soon, right? You don't want to be too aggressive. And a lot of times you can't tell exactly where your fly is. So when you see that aggressive tail and you know you're in that zone, that's a great time to go ahead and give it a little pop. Even if you're midway through the strip, just give it a little extra just to see if he's there. And I think that would be a very, very helpful tip. As far as gear goes, uh, that fish, uh, again, we're in ankle deep water very, very shallow. These bead chain eyes flies, this is called a bonefish butta. And uh, these little bead chain eyes allow you to really get a tight shot on the fish. You don't need a lot of weight to sink, but you can be much more aggressive on your delivery with that light little bead chain eyes. So we've switched a couple of times today between heavy and light. And it seems to be the weight has a more profound impact on your success than the actual pattern of the fly uh, itself. As far as gear goes, eight weight rod, TNT sec distent, T-bore reel, and uh, a real Flats Pro Elite fly line. Okay, we're taking a break from bonefish fishing. Now we're fishing for giant trevally, and uh, we're, you know, you're gonna spend part of your time here at Christmas Island uh, without the aid of a guide. Uh, the guide is gonna be with your fishing partner, probably in a little bit different area of the flat. And so you'll have to make some of these decisions uh, for yourself. and. What I've got here is I've got this flat that I'm looking at right here and uh, my fishing partner is way down there in the distance and uh, what I found is I'm standing up on kind of a high spot standing up on kind of a coral rock and it's giving me another 18 inches of elevation so that I can see this whole area and the vantage the the vantage point is nice but I've also situated myself so the wind is at my back with a slight left to right, which is good for a right-hander. And uh, I've got most of the light, the best light is out this direction so that I can see. And when, when you circle these flats, for Giant Trevally, you're not gonna walk these things down. They move very, very quickly. Uh, so I have had my most success, especially on Trophy GTs, of just finding a good vantage point with a good spot keeping my line ready and I'm not having to look down where I'm walking. My eyes are solely focused on the flat out here and I can't help but just look while I'm vlogging right here, but getting a high spot where the wind and light is advantageous and then just taking pause and really waiting in ambush so that I'm not moving and I can see the fish much better if I'm sitting still um, because I know the flat, I know the dark spots. I've looked at a couple of suspicious rocks out there about four times, but I think that's a really helpful tip for Giant Trevally is find a good vantage point, stay here, be patient, uh, and then as you walk, you kind of look for your next vantage point, stay there and be patient. And then if you're by yourself, you can do this. I see the guys do it a lot. Every few minutes, if you just make a, a little bit of, little bit of noise like that, Sometimes these fish will come off the, the depth and they'll hear that if they're within, I don't know how far, but a reasonable distance and then they'll come up and patrol the flat. So there's a couple little uh, tips for GT fishing in Christmas Island. Okay, casting tip. Having a strong cast is the most important thing that you can bring with you to Christmas Island. A strong cast should be on the packing list. Now, I've got a situation right now where I need to throw the fly back behind me and I'm just gonna go ahead and launch it and send it back there. And that's a back cast. And the reason you're gonna wanna have that tool in your toolbox, I don't mean just being able to flop it behind you. I mean a laser tight loop that shoots like a, a laser beam at not a long ways, but out to 60 feet. The reason we back cast is because we have a wind that's blowing from right to left. And if I turn around and I try throwing over this side, that wind is gonna blow that fly right into me. It's gonna hit me in the head, hit me in the back, hit me in the butt. That's happened a few times this week. But what I wanna do is make a back cast. And there's one trick I'm gonna show you to making that much more powerful, especially when we're dealing with heavy saltwater rods. And that is when, when you go to make your final back cast, uh, I'll try to do this as slow as I can. And I may even, I may even put it in slow motion. 
but let's just say I'm casting and I'm posturing my body the opposite way and I'm setting up and I'm gonna throw a low cast this way and as I go to launch, I'm gonna put that butt of that rod in my forearm right there and that gives you a little extra juice and really helps that cast lay out tight and straight. So practice that before you go. That back cast is gonna be incredibly helpful, especially if you dislike getting hit in the head with a six aught streamer fly. Tuck that butt of that rod in as you finish that back cast like so. Got him. I did that on purpose. It was wrapped around my butt. Otherwise it would have broke. Oh, that was insane. I don't know how that'll show up on camera, but I gotta do a little reel in here. The line got caught around the butt of my rod and it, it would have broke off if I didn't do anything about it. So I threw my rod in the water and let the fish drag my rod for a few feet. And then I picked it up, I don't even remember what happened. Um, I picked it up again and it was still wrapped up but I, the fish made a little belly in it and gave me just enough slack to free it up and didn't break the fish off. That was crazy. All right, every fish has a story. And this one's got a pretty good story. And uh, let me get him, not a super big one, but oh, that was so satisfying. You know, one of the tips from, one of the takeaways here is I had to follow my own advice and not cast until I could see the fish. And all I could see was him tailing from time to time. But as I was talking about during the video, it's not uncommon for your shooting line and I know better than that you never let go of your line when you shoot you always 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 maintain a grip on it even when you're shooting lines so that it prevents it from catching up around the butt of your rod well in that instance the line was around the butt of my rod it sucked up all my line and I knew that line was just going to break and I'd lose the fly and lose the fish so I just pitched my rod in the water and let the fish tow it along for a minute and fortunately what happened is the fish made a pretty good belly in the line while it was towing and I was able to pick the rod up and the line was just loose enough that I was able to uh, undo it from the butt. The other, if you're, not, if you're not prepared to throw your rod in the water, uh, the other thing you can do when it goes around the butt is if you can reach down and just free spool your drag. Uh, sometimes that loosening it up will allow the line to run around the back of the reel and still go out and allow you to pick the line. So if it was around the butt like this, sometimes, uh, Sometimes that, that loosening up the drag will allow it to actually pull around the reel uh, like so and doesn't, you can see it's just going around the reel right there and then I can reach down and undo it and hopefully uh, get the fish and get your fly back. But that's another uh, bonefish tip from Christmas Island. There's good GT, good GT. Yeah. All right, I got another GT tip for you. Now you might believe me because I actually have one on, but we're out here the last spot of the day it always seems like the evening the guides will stay out but you gotta have the energy to stay focused we've been rained on all day and it would have been easy just to kind of give up but we're on this spit right here and these fish are pinching the mullet up against this beach and we've been kind of waiting for it to happen and you got you got to be careful 
when you get in there, you don't want to just make a disturbance. So we stood back and watched for about 20 minutes. And then we started creeping up to the edge. And uh, I saw one little, little GT out there right along the edge. And I waited and waited to see if a bigger one would show up. And uh, it didn't, so I just crept out and I started to throw just a couple blind casts. But you gotta stay back because they eat right on the edge of the green. And I watched it eat the fly. It was amazing, but it was right on the fringe. But when you stand for blind casting, you generally don't wanna stand right out on the edge. You wanna stay back and throw a long cast over there because they most often strike right at the edge right there. So we're gonna crank on this thing for a few minutes and then we'll check back in. Lord willing, we get them to hand. Okay, so when you, when you fight these GTs, the guides will typically want your rod up really high. Normally when we fight fish, we wanna turn their head to the side, but there seems to be like coral and obstacles along the bottom. And those trevally will just run the bottom back and forth and eventually snag you up on something. And we don't have a, access to a boat to follow the fish or anything, so we've gotta winch this baby in. And you wanna keep that rod elevated. And I should have done this sooner, but you want to get right up to the ledge. You cast from, from back, but when you fight them, you want to make sure you're up at the ledge so that it doesn't drag your line right across the ledge. We've been, we're about now oh, five to 10 minutes into the fight now. We'll check back in a minute. Okay, we got him up in the flat, and now we're going to take him. If you're landing these by yourself, it's a good idea to take him up into the shallows where you can kind of lay them on their side. Oh, that's an awesome fish. Oh. Look at that. Come to Papa. Oh. God, they're heavy. Just the bone density on these things is incredible. Okay, Chad, I think you're gonna have to get them. There you go. Look at that, man. These things are so freaking heavy and cool and so powerful. And you get to catch them in the flats in the shallow water, man. I was shin deep. There's nothing better than that right there. That is tremendous. Uh, yeah, it was pretty sweet. We've been just, we've had the heck beat out of us by weather the last two days. It's been raining, blowing. We've had to just basically weather out a few storms and uh, to be able to hook one up was awesome. Uh, I hope some of the tips that I shared uh, resonate with you about standing back away from the ledge when you make a cast or when you're waiting in position for a giant trevally and then getting to the ledge with your rod very high uh, after you hook one of them. And if you are gonna make some blind casts and, the, and you have knowledge that it's a, a, a very good spot, I would sit and watch for 20 or 30 minutes and move very, very slowly if you are gonna move before you make any blind cast because you're much better off making a sight cast uh, to a fish. Blind casting typically is very unproductive, but I knew there was a couple of trevally in there because I'd seen a smaller one prior to that. And I still managed to wait a while before I approached the ledge and started to, to make blind cast because with trevally, you really want to place the fly in a way where the fly is fleeing and swimming away from them. Uh, and you can only do that when you can see them. Uh, with certainty anyway so anyway that was absolutely awesome it just it always seems like it's the fourth quarter uh when we get these things just sticking it out to the very end and uh, just staying ready at all times keeping your line managed appropriately choosing carefully where you stand and then just always uh just being attentive uh, to your surroundings as far as equipment goes uh, i'll give you the rundown i'm fishing a t-bore riptide reel with a tarpon clear floater from rio for my line and then uh, the big old black brushy from Fulling Mill uh, is my line of choice. Then I'm running 60 pound uh, Scientific Anglers absolute fluorocarbon tippet with a tiny little loop knot that you can see there. I like to tie my loop knots very small. And I'm running about a seven foot leader. So I played around with the intermediate sinking line yesterday. That was a total disaster. The floater is the way to go for Trevally in Christmas Island.